What is up everyone? Welcome back. Today we are taking a look at top 5 biggest shows from Paris Fashion Week. In case you want to check out Milan Fashion Week as well, you can do it right there. So on today's list, we have Dior, Rigo Wens, Givenchy, also Loewe and Saint Laurent. Alright guys, let's get started. Dior Spring 24 collection was special. It marked Kim Jong's fifth anniversary as a creative director of Dior menswear line. We live in times where creative directors shuffle around every season. Naturally, five years is a long time, so for Kim Jong's, probably this collection meant a lot. He staged the show inside the futuristic grape box outside the Ecole Militaire in Paris. Guests were seated in a long, futuristic hallway paved with glossy metal ties. It seemed like any other runway where the models would turn up somewhere in the back and walk down the hallway one by one, but instead models slowly rose up from the floor all at once. For the audience, it was truly a jaw-dropping moment. Alright, for this anniversary collection, Jones came up with something special. He wanted this to be like a melting pot, where he himself and three dear designers who preceded him would blend together as one. He referenced in Salaro, Gianfranco Ferre and Mark Bowen. Tradition and subversion in harmony described Kim Jones. The main element that connected all the designers was Christian Dior's canache, the pattern the house founder based on the woven rattan chairs, in which guests sat at his first salon show in 1947. The big sartorial story in this collection was Boucle for Men. Kim took this traditionally ladies' material and gave it the Dior treatment. The starting point was tweed oversized suits. They were made up with straight leg white pants and shoulder robed suit jackets. They had shiny embellishments like floral brooches on the lapels. We saw similar floral decorations at Milan Fashion Week and it's here also in Paris. Alright, it's no secret that Kim Jones loves to collab with many different artists. However, he broke his habit in this collection. The only featured artist in this collection was a millionaire Stefan Jones. He created a handful of cyber pop pinnies, accessorized with velvet flowers. They played a big role in elevating the looks, consisting of tweed overcoats coupled with white socks and deer sandals. Dior Kanash pattern appeared on everything, starting from crop knits and cardigans to sleeveless tops. Cardigans were elegantly worn over the shoulders, paired with cropped sweaters and polo tops. Dior polo tops were super special. They appeared in vibrant colors, ranging from neon green and yellow to orange and blue. Polo shirts played an important role in elevating the Dior suits. They added a pop of color to an otherwise neutral and muted looks. Clearly, this collection takes Monsieur Dior's love for tweed and jewels to all new heights. This season, Kim Jones was particularly inspired by some of the jewelry pieces from the past, like capuchin embroideries. He added them to a wide range of garments, like pinstripe shirts and fluorescent green twin sets. Alright, as expected from spring summer collection, we see a lot of shorts on the runway. Dior short shorts were part of an interesting ensemble that included matching v neck tops. Others featured leopard prints inspired by Dior's Mitsa Bricard. Same prints were reproduced on set bags and sleeveless tops. Mitsa Bricard was Christian Dior's muse and French fashion icon from 50s. Overall, Dior Spring 24 menswear was a tribute to the Dior's legendary designers. Kim Jones reinterpreted their ideas and transformed them to fit for the needs of modern men. The collection simultaneously embraced tradition and subversion. Once again, Kim Jones blew us away how good he can reinterpret the archives and create a menswear that can rival any womenswear counterparts. Rick Owens' Spring Summer 24 show was the most Rick Owens we've seen in a while. Normally, 
colors are a distraction for Rikowens. Without colors, he can focus better on silhouettes and shapes. This started to change over the last two collections. He surprised his fans with vibrant colors, such as pink, purple and yellow. His comment on this drastic change was that he simply wanted to challenge himself. Also, he said that with colors, he wanted to have some hope and light because his past collections have been always dark and super fatalistic. Anyways, looks like Rick is done with colors and experimenting. This time, he did not feel like celebrating or being too optimistic because of all the wrong and trouble in the world. However, he still wanted to have some kind of joy and a positive tone in the collection. In the show notes, Rick explains that as humans, we should consider joy a moral obligation. He continued that personal joy is what we are put on earth to do, meaning even though the world is all dark and troubled place, we can't give up and be super mean to ourselves and to each other. How one handles adversity is what defines one's character. To capture this attitude and state of mind, Rick proposes the collection Restrained, All Informal, Full of Grim and Determined Elegance, Drama Queen and All Black. The collection was entitled Lido, after the Lido Island in Venice, where Rick actually lives and where he streamed several almost audience-free shows during the pandemic. Alright, as you can tell, the show was staged at Rick's favorite spot in Paris, Palais de Tokyo. This time, he surprised us with new gear, while well, fog machines are nothing new for his shows, and now he compliments them with fireworks. They would detonate from one of the six towering rigs set in the pool and fill the space with swirls of purple and yellow smoke. Ash rained down and the scene seemed simultaneously apocalyptic and ecstatic. Alright, the starting point in this collection is a Victorian silhouette, which Rick Owens has been perfecting over the past few seasons. It's wide at the shoulder and ankle and cinched inwards at the middle. The signature item in this collection is a pair of high-waisted pants. More precisely, they are high and cinch-waisted and skim the leg, flaring out to drag on the floor. They are heightened by asymmetrical and sculptural looking tops. They wrap and twist and drape around the upper torso. The signature silhouette was taken to the next level by super cropped tailor jackets. Their sharply extended shoulders are caught with a skin in its sleeve to control the volume and elongate the arm. Such contrast emphasized and exaggerated the shapes and silhouettes even more. The similar construction is extended to coats, creating an imposing silhouette while being airy and light as a feather. More special treatments are given to tailored coats by extending their lapels and turning them into hoods. This original twist turned Rick Owens models into the popular characters from the Assassin's Creed game. Similar hood construction is extended to leather and nylon trench coats. Here the waistline is defined by a belt, knotted elegantly at the side. Alright, Rick Owens is madly in love with spiked shoulders. In his last collection, spiked shoulder bummer jackets were a thing. This time around, the spiked shoulder treatment is given to jersey tops. Here, car of shorts and cargo pants are cut in Japanese salvage denim, stone washed, over dyed, and waxed. Moreover, we had super oversized jersey tops resembling Roman tunics. Rick's models did not carry any tools or light weaponry, just like ancient Romans did. Instead, they carried bandanas, keychains, and caps. On the foot, their chunky sandals closely mimicked broken foot casts. They are a sandal version of last season's splint boots. There is also a triple strapped hoof splint, like having leather pillows strapped to your feet. To sum it up, looks like the Dark Lord of Fashion is back. Surprisingly enough, unlike any other Riggs collection, this one was super wearable. Naturally, this collection can relate to a broader audience outside the cycle of die-hard Riggs fans. And on the critic side, I feel like Rick has been doing same silhouettes and shapes over the past few seasons.
Messi Williams' annual Spring Summer 24 collection for Givenchy. His last show received a great acclaim and naturally, Givenchy fans had their initial expectations. Probably, everyone expected a continuation of previous collection, like part number two, at least with some similarities. Well, looks like Matthew Williams had no intention to do that. He seems rather being into contrasting collections from season to season. He transitions last season's sharp, maximalist and super loud collection into the total opposite. This time, he delivers super relaxed, easy and soft collection. The same tone is kept throughout the show. We saw a lot of relaxed tailoring, school uniforms, technical streetwear, and also military wear, and a few couture caliber formal wear. Military influences are attributed to the show location. It was staged at the Hotel des Invalides in Paris. It's a complex of buildings containing museums and monuments, all relating to the military history of France. As usual, there was no official theme or narrative for the collection. Monsieur Williams strictly sticks to making clothes without getting distracted by seasonal themes. However, he still mentions that his late creative process and work is influenced by conversations with his 14 years old son. This is obvious if you look closer, there is a constant interplay between male archetypes, kids wanting to look more like adults and adults wanting to look more like kids. Alright, show opener looks were all about relaxed tailoring. Wide but soft-shouldered suit jackets match perfectly with loose and boxy silky pants. Relaxed tailoring transitioned into technical streetwear. It was more like a mix of formal wear and technical streetwear. Matthew Williams mingled tailored pants, formal shirts and ties with nylon jackets and windbreakers. Looked like models were heading to a corporate event or press conference of some kind, and they were caught in a heavy downpour. The accessory game was pretty impressive. We saw a lot of backpacks, beanies, waist belts, harness belts, you name it. Matthew Williams streetwear was super cool and at the same time highly grounded into reality. They were super wearable. Alright, from streetwear and techwear, Matthew Williams transitioned into military and utility wear. A lot of craft bombers and oversized field jackets were put on display. If you look closer, there are not much logos in the collection. Matthew Williams finally got over with logos and heavy branding. Probably the closing segment was the most Givenchy thing in this collection. It unveiled sharp-shouldered minimalist tuxedos and sleeveless tailored jumpsuits. They looked super futuristic. They had no side seams and radiated pure elegance and simplicity. Other memorable moments included olive tailored suit inspired by Eisenhower jacket. It comes from World War II era, worn by Dwight Eisenhower, American military officer who served as the 34th President of the United States. Overall, Matthew Williams managed to orchestrate super original and kind of controversial collection. A lot of people loved it and also a lot of them not so much. Most critics hinted that the collection was stuck between Givenchy and Alg Studio, his own technical streetwear brand. Well, I feel like Matthew Williams keeps exploring male archetypes and I guess that's a good thing. He constantly tries to get out of his comfort zone and do something new, and he deserves the credit for that. Jonathan Anderson turned Loewe into one of the most influential forces in fashion. His sense of curiosity and love for the art resonated well with the Spanish luxury fashion house. Each season, he taps into something new and interesting and explores the idea through fashion. Well, this time is no different. His Loewe Spring 24 collection is a study on perspectives. It's about how points of view defines perception and scales and how perceptions and scales draw silhouette. He did a collab with American artist Linda Benglis. Her fountain sculptures were inserted into the three shallow pools. Dwarfed by Linda Benglis' gigantic water-sprouting fountains, attendees look at the catwalk from a wide angle. 
and from the bottom up, taken by a certain grandeur. At least, this is what the silhouette entices. Legs are long, the waist is high, and the bust becomes compact, explained Jonathan Anderson. In simple terms, this collection is a play of proportions in dialogue with Bangley's bulbous sculptures of the three fountains. Anderson's collection most resembled the tall and towering columns of combs in the center of the runway. By pulling the waistband of his pants up so very high, Anderson said afterwards, he wanted to create a way of seeing this collection that was akin to viewing it from the ground level with a fisheye lens. Anderson keeps exploring the same silhouette throughout the collection. Also, he adds few adjustments in shapes here and there. For example, he made the silhouette more voluminous on top by introducing chunky color block needs into the picture. He took this to the next level by dressing his models in exaggerated pink tabard vest. It was pierced at the top by a giant needle like a pincushion. Anderson unveiled most sculptural pieces, such as asymmetrical sleeveless tops. They were artistically draped and wrapped. Other memorable garments shown in the collection are argyle knits and banker shirts. Right away, I imagined Loewe models as modern bankers heading to work. This is where corporate meets art and fashion. Speaking of art and fashion, J.W. Anderson transformed cardigans into artwork. They had a distorted and glitchy constructions with cutouts and asymmetrical v-neck opening. Other artsy garments included extra long sleeveless tops. Seems like they come with integrated shoulder bags that gives an impression that front panel of the top is tucked into the back. Apart from artsy items, there are some handsome, more classically luxurious items, including rope coats and layered knit sweaters with zipper funnel necks. Jonathan Anderson is a type of designer who always tries to find contradictions in men and women and then blurs all that out. Two leather jumpsuits near the end, one scarlet, the other black, conveyed the cool neutrality of Anderson's approach to gender. They looked super elegant, reduced and very luxe. All in all, the Loewe Spring Summer 24 collection was a masterful composition of artistry, craftsmanship and modernity. Jonathan Anderson successfully framed the artwork in the context of fashion. He once again blended Loewe DNA and tradition with innovation and contemporary art. No doubt, he is one of the most daring designers of our time. He is not afraid to bend our minds and change our eyes. The St. Lawrence Spring 24 Mass Collection, designed by creative director Anthony Vaccarello, continued to showcase the brand's signature elegant and sleek aesthetic while infusing it with modern elements and a touch of sensuality. The show was staged in Berlin at Neue Nationalgalerie, the iconic symbol of classical modernism. It was the last major project designed by a German-American architect, Ludwig Miss Van der Rohe. Anthony Vaccarello calls this collection, Each man kills the things he loves. This is a phrase from a poem written by Oscar Wilde and the song sung by Jean Marot in the movie Courrel, filmed in 1982 by Rainer Werner Fassbinder, one of the Berlin's most legendary directors. Anyways, with Vaccarello diving deep into film and references that dissected and challenged the concept of masculinity, it was not any wonder that the collection was a play on sensual, androgynous dressing. He unraveled the narrative of a contemporary men's identity. It's all a dessert collection for Vaccarello and his quest to define what St. Laurent could mean for a modern man, whose wardrobe is shaped by the brand's women's wear line. Elements that have been explored in the last few collections are being revisited and expanded upon in this collection. First and foremost, we see a fluid interaction between components that are traditionally seen as masculine and feminine. Backstage, Vaccarello revealed that he began developing this collection by imagining 
how his fall 23 women's wear collection would look worn by men. From the starting point, he took prominent elements from the preceding collection, exaggerated boxy shoulders juxtaposed with fitted pants, low-cut necklines and scarves draping down to the floor, the show opener black suit with strong padded shoulders and high-waisted pants became a signature silhouette throughout the collection. Footwear looked equally progressive and elegant, glossy high heel boots seemingly were done in patent leather. Alright, the collection featured a wide range of sculptural shirts and see-through tops. While solids were prevalent, the collection also incorporated subtle patterns such as animal prints and polka dots, again with androgyny at the core of the collection. Vaccarello explored femininity and masculinity by experimenting with various necklines, cross halters, sleeveless high necks and sensual off shoulders and asymmetrical one shoulders were all present throughout the show. Sensually wrapped tops had their bow tie necklines trailing southwards like whales. Probably it was the most sensual and elegant element of the collection. Speaking of elegance, we should briefly touch on satin trench coats. Those head to toe black outfits took the entire collection to different level of elegance and sophistication. Accessories that played a crucial role in this were black sunglasses with lower attached handles. Overall, the collection was explored in black and white. However, this monochromatic palette remained novel as Vaccarello played with textiles such as satin and chiffon. In between looks, pops of brown and air stones also made an appearance along with leopard prints. They added a touch of extravagance and glam rock grandiose. The closing segment of the show unveiled broad shoulder tuxedos with exaggerated bow ties and scarves trailing backwards and touching the floor. It was a display of sensual androgynous dressing with a lot of elegance and a touch of modernity. Overall, Anthony Vaccarello managed to successfully define a contemporary men's identity. He created an alluring balance of seductiveness, elegance and formality. This collection was yet another important milestone in his ongoing evolution of his distinct Saint Laurent aesthetic. Alright, guys, that was it for today. Hope you enjoyed the review and got something out of it. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.